Today we find out if Jordan Peterson's Beyond Order stacks up to Jordan's original 12 Rules for Life. So welcome back everybody to another Mere Mortals book reviews. Thank you so much for joining us. Now I have got the Beyond Order 12 More Rules for Life by Jordan B. Peterson. Now you might recall, uh, you might have seen a couple of weeks ago that I myself went through and reviewed 12 Rules for Life. Uh, the original Jordan Peterson book in terms of the, the short essay. So the original uh, queries they put through on Quora, someone put up a particular query and he responded back with a certain amount of answers. And that's where these two books stand from. So you know, the original 12 Rules for Life, if you haven't checked out that book review, go make sure you do that. So I'll, I'll reflect on the Beyond Order book that I've just read uh, in relation to it. Now, Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. The book on its own was fine. It's a fine piece of work. It is much thicker, and I'm going to hold this out so you can see it uh, visually for the folks checking it out. It's a lot thicker than the original one, the original 12 Rules for Life, and it's structured over those uh, next set of rules. And it's whether you could say the 12 Rules for Life, the original by Jordan Peterson was much more individualistic in nature. Beyond Order focuses a lot more on the overall societal uh, rules. Some of them are extensions to the original 12 Rules for Life, um, and we can we'll talk into that. Uh, but it, as you can see, it'll be it's broad in nature in terms of going beyond the individual. Um, the actual book itself, and it's just interesting to note that it's it's sort of sandwiched in between a little bit more of a personal story behind Jordan Peterson. So for those who might not know, he went through some pretty tough times. Um, I won't do justice just talking through that, but himself, his family, uh, obviously his wife, Michaela, his daughter, and everyone else, he went through some pretty tumultuous times on top of uh, everything that was happening in COVID. And, you know, he actually discusses in this particular book, you know, whether it was right that he wasn't really uh, pointing out a lot in what was happening during COVID as obviously he was writing this book during the time, during a lot of suffering. He didn't actually talk too much, actually not at all, of COVID in the actual book itself. He made mention to it in, in the sort of the intro and the outro of the actual book. But I think the the suffering that he explains that he went through and everything that him and his family have gone through probably put an extra layer in terms of the perspective that you see when you're reading this book and seeing where Jordan comes from. Because sometimes a lot of people might find him a little bit too uh, too technical or maybe too theoretical. But you could truly see that there was a flair of personality of you know Jordan what it had experienced through this book, even more so than the original. So I'll, I'll give him that. So the actual synopsis of the book. So Beyond Daughter provides life advice through 12 essays, similar to the original 12 Rules for Life. And these essays go in a very similar structure, using a lot of the information which Jordan uh, is familiar uh, or is known to actually pull out. So that includes theology. He actually pulls a little bit of Harry Potter knowledge. I was surprised by how much he knew about Harry Potter and Quidditch and the like. Uh, as well as sort of Disney movies as well. So he intertwines a lot of these stories uh, slash personal stories as well. He, uh, in the previous book, he referenced quite a lot of things that occurred in his life as well as other people. And beyond order, he referenced a lot of things that happened to himself as well as his family. So a little bit closer to home. Another aspect of the book that I enjoyed and I I like this sort of thing in books is when they actually sequence together quite nicely. So when you read the 12 more 12 more rules for life beyond order, you'll actually find that going from chapter one to chapter two, three, four onwards, he'll actually start referring back to those previous chapters almost to build and support on the fact of the information that he's bringing together. For myself, I really enjoy that. It's a book that is meant to be picked up and read start to finish rather than kind of jumping around. You can still do that. That's totally fine. But I, I appreciated that that supporting and reference back to it, especially as this is a 350 plus, 350 plus page book. And I had to read this over quite a long time. So the ability to kind of reflect back on something that just got spoken and intertwine it with what was going to come next really helped me out at the very least. So if you're that sort of individual that might read at a slower pace, perhaps you might enjoy that. So onto the themes of the book. Um, really, there was some a continuation of rules. So in the original 12 Rules for Life, there was clean up your room. But in Beyond Order, we have try to make one room in your house as perfect or as beautiful as possible. So there's some extension of rules that were from the original Rules for Life. Some of them are completely different. 
So some of those that could be completely different would be uh, do not carelessly denigrate social institutions or create achievement. And if you listen to a lot of Jordan Peterson on the podcast or any podcast, uh, that's a rule that he's been talking about quite a lot. Uh, some of the other ones as well that are a little bit uh, less continuations and something maybe a little bit different from him. If you haven't heard from him, uh, planning and working diligently to maintain the romance in your relationship and not allowing yourself to become resentful, deceitful or arrogant to name a few. Um, the other one that this theme uh, actually takes is a connection with the real world. So, you know, to be expected, those connections uh, tie back to literature, poetry, mythology. There's, got, there's a Ten Commandments thrown in there. But as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it also ties back to a lot of his family circumstances, what his family has gone through, the personal sufferings that he has experienced and relating that back to a lot of these rules. In general, the themes of the book aren't hard to point out. There's 12 rules. Another 12 rules from Jordan Peterson. And if you know anything about him, you'll understand that he talks a lot about suffering. He compare, he obviously uh, compares that to stories to try to pass that information on in a, a more informative way, in a way that was going to actually stick around. But if you read through 12 Rules for Life, and again, if you've listened to anything from Jordan Peterson, you'll start to find that, one, it's a little bit harder to actually take away all of the meaning that you that you probably can from a video as opposed to the way that he writes. And that probably takes me a little bit to my personal observations of the book. I found this book to me to not be as powerful as 12 Rules for Life. And I don't know whether that is because 12 Rules for Life was more of an individual um, look at a, at a human being and some of the rules that my play at hard, whereas the Beyond Daughter is sort of that yin-yang and looking at much more order at an at a organizational, cultural, broader level. So maybe I didn't touch base as much with that. But I just found after, you know, I recently read 12 Rules for Life. And I think reading a lot of this, listening to a lot of Jordan, and then going through and reading Beyond Order very, very shortly thereafter, I found that I didn't take as much away as I did in the original. And I wasn't taking away as much as I was from the video I, or, or listening to him really for that matter. And a lot of the rules that he put together and all of the continuation around suffering, while it was new and it was interesting, it again, compared back to some of the same mythologies and some of the same stories that I've, I've heard him talk about. Um, but not only that, I, I understand the way that Jordan writes because it is the way he speaks. But in this book, you can really tell how that, at least for myself, hampers this book. Because as you read it through, you can get through three or four pages on a particular topic or a particular rule, may I say, and you could have just succinctly put that down to one paragraph, right? A couple of lines, which would have really plainly spelled it out. But instead, Jordan decides to go on a little bit of a meander into uh, you know, a story and not only just tell that story, but then tell potentially another story, try to combine them together, go down the beaten track of another idea, tie it all together. Um, and when it's such a large book, sometimes I just found myself losing focus, losing the point of, okay, what is this rule all about? And sometimes I have to reflect back and go, what what rule was he actually talking about here? I will take also though two personal observations that I really enjoyed. The two chapters I probably recommend for most people. Those would be do not hide unwanted things in the fog and do not allow yourself to become resentful, deceitful, or arrogant. Now, on to the first one. Why do not hide un unwanted things in the fog? So in my previous takeaway, uh, I'll give it away. My, my biggest takeaway was to not lie. And there's something in here around lying as well. But just the fact of not hiding things unwanted in the fog and the way that Jordan explained it in the book itself. That was probably one of the most powerful chapters for me. Uh, the stories that he relayed there were great. And it just helped me at least kind of view it in that way where in everyday life, when I'm looking at things and I, I like to keep the fog there, perhaps there's an issue at work, there's an issue in the way that I'm interacting with other humans. You know, to keep the fog is to almost leave things uh, at play without actually acting on them. And I guess the way he points it out, he points out the fog is, you know, better to leave what is enshrouded in mystery as is, right? That's kind of almost the, the tendency to leave it as is. You don't want to move away the fog. If you move away the fog, you might actually find the thorns, the spikes, the danger, but that's what you have to do. That's what you have to go and uncover. You have to find the spikes. You have to find the unwanted horns because it's better to know about it and do something about it and take that action and be responsible than leave it in the fog and not know what's going to happen until it actually happens to you. Now, the second one, do not allow yourself to become resentful, 
deceitful or arrogant. Broadly, and I'm not going to do a good job on explaining it the way that Jordan uh, does with his dragon and mythology, so I leave that to him. But the way that I just took that away, right, is just not becoming a a member of society that can be resentful, deceitful, arrogant. These sort of trio, as he calls it, Jordan, of characteristics that just can bring not just yourself down, but everyone else around you. Um, and not that it's a direct uh, opposite to it, but you want to be a, a more positive, a more joyous, a, I guess less arrogant, a more humble, more transparent type of individual. And saying it is one thing, right? The characteristics of those opposites are so fantastic. Yes, we all want to be like this, but it is just such a struggle of, you know, sometimes as humans, we're going to be resentful, we're going to be deceitful, we're going to be arrogant, and it's just not allowing yourself to delve into the depth that that uh, allows the humans to explore, not getting to the point where, you know, you're being arrogant and deceitful and you allow yourself to continue to go further and further beyond because not only will you hurt yourself, you're going to hurt others. So it's almost about recognizing that and being able to stop yourself and moving on whatever the course may be. So now, mere mortals in summary, John Peterson, Beyond Order. Look, I have to give it a six and a half out of 10. Um, and that's quite low in comparison to the original 12 Rules for Life that I read by Jordan Peterson. Uh, why? I just thought you you can get it, some good information, not as much as the original, but for the investment that this thick book gives or asks of you, I don't believe it delivers on a punchy book that you can really take away. Does it have a lot of information that's probably going to be really relevant to a lot of people? Yes. Are you going to get some good learnings out of it? Yes. Would I recommend you just go listen to an equivalent of 10 to 15 hours of Jordan Peterson and podcasts uh, to get most of the takeaways and you're probably going to capture a lot more information? Absolutely. That's what I was going to really recommend. So six and a half, unfortunately, it's still a great book. I just didn't enjoy uh, taking my way through it. To be honest, by the time I finished it, I thought, Good. I'm happy this is done. I'm going to close the chapter on these two books. I'm going to take my takeaways and move on from there. So Jordan, sorry, six and a half out of 10, but it's still a quite good book with good information. Thank you, me immortals. That has been the book review of Beyond Order by Jordan Peterson, 12 More Rules for Life. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. Another Me Immortals book review. Now you're watching this. I'd love to ask you, please subscribe like, comment, do all the great things. It's always supported here in the channel. Appreciate you taking the time. Thank you once again. Have a great day.